While he's doing that, in one of the containers, he saw mice. Now he had a choice of taking that container back or all the oil back to the person who sold him this oil. Take it back. This oil is nuggets. I can't deal with it. Give me some other oil for this or give me my money back. Imam Nisirin rahimahullah thought to himself and he said, if I take it back to the person, this person may end up selling it to other Muslims and they will use this nuggets oil it will be, I will be the reason for that. Because I took it back to him. I don't want that to happen. And I don't want so many people to lose their salah and their ibadahs by using this najis oil in their bodies and then they're doing the salah unknowingly and the salah is not being accepted. I don't want to take that burden on my shoulder. And if I take it back to the person and that person turns out to be God-fearing person and he throws the oil, then he will lose. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب اليقين ما يحب لنفسي No one can be a true believer till he loves for his brothers, whatever he likes for himself. So I'd rather lose than making him lose. So he threw all the oil away. The person didn't know and he did not even mention it to anyone else. No one knew, it or knew about him. That person went and he filed a case against Imam Nasirin rahimahullah that he bought the oil but didn't pay me for it yet. And still he didn't mention it. And the governor had to imprison Imam Nasirin rahimahullah for that that until, unless you pay your loan or you make an arrangement for paying it, you have to stay in there. <laughs> Look at his wara during that time Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu the Khadim of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the person who spent 10 years serving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he passed away. And it was part of his will that I want Muhammad ibn Sirin to lead my Salat al-Janazah. <coughs> Remember? Sirin, the father of Muhammad ibn Sirin, was a slave to Anas bin Malik. Then he set him free. And Anas bin Ma and Muhammad ibn Sirin was born and raised in the house of Anas radiallahu anhu with all of that he knows his taqwa and he trusts him so much that his will says I want Muhammad bin Sirin to lead my Salat al-Janazah a Sahabi will make the will that I want this person to lead the Janazah this is enough to speak for itself and to tell us the level and the status of this great Tabi'i and a great scholar of Islam anyway the time he passed away Muhammad ibn Sirin was in prison because of the same reason. So the one and approached him that this was the will of Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu. He had passed away and you should come and leave the Salat al-Janazah. We have talked to the governor and he gave a special permission for you to come out and leave Salat al-Janazah. So alhamdulillah you have a permission to go out, to come out and leave the Salat. He said no. I cannot come out with his permission. Because I'm not in the prison because of him. I'm in the prison because of the person who filed the case against me. And I owe it to that person. Go and seek the permission from that person. What right this governor has to let me out? Look at this. This is what the one is. This is what deen is. This is what the real, real practice is. Finding. Not, ex not trying to find excuse to get out of there. Making sure that he won't do anything that is against the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if he would have to stay in prison for that. Then he was offered that night time you can, knowing such a great scholar and then knowing his situation that he didn't commit a crime, it was such a situation that led him to the situation. So they allowed him that night time you can go and spend night at your home and then come back before Salat al Fajr, come back to the prison. He said no. This is not the ruling of the Sharia. Ah. I will not accept it. If you deal with every person in the same manner, then I would accept it. But this is not how you deal with other people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With all of this, blessed him with the right understanding of things. And one of them was the dreams. Subhanallah, when you look at how he used to interpret the dream and the gift that he was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this field, 
it amazes that how deep of an understanding he had of things once a person came to him and said, I have seen myself calling an adhan. He looked at the person. He said, you will be doing a hajj. After some time, a person came and said the very same thing. Another person came. He said, I have seen myself calling an adhan in my dream. He said, you will be caught stealing. So the student said, two people came with the same dream. Some months ago, a person came to you. He said he will be. He was calling Adhan. You said to him, "You go for Hajj." Here, you tell this person that he will be called stealing. He said yes. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala used the word Adhan in Quran Al Karim with Hajj wa Adhin fi Nasib Al Hajj, and He used the word Adhan in Quran with stealing. فَأَذَنَ مُؤَذِّنٌ أَيَّتُهَا الْعِيرُ إِنَّكُمْ لَسَارِقُونَ In the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. So he said, looking at that person, I could tell by his look that very virtuous person, God-fearing person, fulfilling the farad of Islam, he will be doing the hajj. The next person, by his look, I could tell that he is not that type of person. So I said to him, the other eye fixed on you now. Once a person came to him and said, I have seen a dream that there was a fire under my bed. He said, congratulations, you will have a lot of treasures. Sometime later, another person came and he said, the very same thing. I have seen a dream that there was a fire under my bed. He said, you better get all of your family out. Your fire, your house is about to get on fire. Students asked him, six months ago, you, another person asked, and they're writing all of his dreams and how he interpret the dream so they can learn from him. So they said, six months ago, you interpret the very same dream with something totally different. That person is going to have a treasure and this person is going to have a fire. Why? He said, that person saw that dream in winter time. It was cold. Having fire at your home is good in during the winter time so you can get heat from it. So that was good for him. He'll have something good and that's treasure. And this person sees it in summer. Having that fire in summer is not a good sign. And the student sees that it so happened that everything exactly happened the way he, he mentioned. Imam Malik rahimahullah. Uh, you remember that dream of Imam Malik rahimahullah in his old age. He didn't want to go for Hajj because he wanted to be buried in Medina Munawwara. But at the same time, it was difficult for him to miss Hajj. So he saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his dream. Ya Rasulullah, what should I do? Should I go for Hajj? Or if I'm going to die over there, then I won't go out because I want to die and be buried in Medina Munawwara. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pointed the five fingers, his hand five fingers towards Imam Malik rahimahullah in the dream. When he woke up, he's as confused or even more confused than he was before because he doesn't know what this five means. So, he sent someone to Imam Nasirin rahimahullah. Imam Nasirin rahimahullah said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not telling him how many days or weeks or months he's going to live. Is pointing towards the ayah of Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah indahu ilmu sa'ati wa yunazzilu al-ghayth wa ya'lamu ma fil arham. Five things, no one has the knowledge about them except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling Imam Malik that I don't even know when you would die because I have no knowledge of it. So that's why he's pointing the five fingers that these are five, one of the five things that I have no knowledge about it. Imam Nisirin rahimahullah with all of this with spending with this type of life of helping others teaching the knowledge teaching people the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally many of the histories say that his janazah came out of the prison because up to that time he was not able to pay the debts and he died in the, uh, in the prison and then his janazah came out of the prison and that was also part of his taqwa, his ilm, his wara, that he did not want to come out, although they allowed him to come out, and they were permitting him to come out during the night time, then the person who was he, he was in debt for, that person said to him, okay, I'll let it go. The reply of Imam Nasirin rahimahullah was that I did not do the ibadah of Allah and did not learn this ilm for me to get forgiven for this money and to be paid by people. 
I did not learn these things for this purpose. If I accept what you're saying, simply means I'm selling my dunya, my deen for these 30,000 or 40,000 dinar. I won't accept to sell my deen for that. I'd rather be over here and come out only after I have paid you for it. Once he went out with one of his students and his student said to this owner of the store that, you know, this is Imam Nasirin, the well-known scholar of Islam. Right away, he held the hand of, hand of his uh, student. He said, let's go away from this. You are trying to sell my deen for this merchandise so that he will make, he will reduce the price for me because of my, because of hearing my name. He said, I cannot buy something like this, selling my deen for this merchandise. This was their ilm. This is how they protected their ilm and their taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfeeq. To know the importance of this deen that we have and give us the life of taqwa and wara' the way these scholars of Islam spend their lives. Aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa nisa'il al-muslimin wa al-muslimat. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah.